Welcome. My name is Kevin. And I am Max. And we're here today to share with you some exciting information. That's right. The first thing you'll notice if you're a regular of our channel is that there's no histologic slide behind our faces here. Uh, and that's because we're not showing you a slide with this video today. Right. Uh, instead, we are here today to introduce a video series for you. Right. Okay. So we're calling it the top 25 pearls of pulmonary pathology. And we believe these pearls will change the way you practice day to day. This series comes from working in a busy consultation practice over many years. That's right. The, the idea behind this was that as you're in that consultation practice, after a couple of years, you begin to see patterns develop. And these are not histologic patterns, like the six patterns, but they're patterns in that recurring themes of challenges that we see other pathologists encountering that lead to them deciding to send the case to us and say, hey, I need your help because of X, Y, or Z. Patterns of difficulty. Patterns of difficulty, exactly. Dude, there are patterns everywhere. <laughs> no matter where you look, there's patterns. So these are common scenarios that come up time after time after time. And I found myself thinking, you know, if I could just tell everybody these common scenarios that come up, I could avoid a lot of the consultation work, right. which would be a good thing because right. it's less work for us to do, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's good for you. It's good for us. So Max, didn't you and Brandon do a top 10 pearls? So we did. We put together a top 10 pearls of pulmonary pathology, and it was exceedingly well received. People said, you know, this is great. If I knew these 10 pearls with my last 100 cases, they would have helped me probably 50% of the time. So I figured if 10 is good, 25 is better. 25 must be outstanding. Now don't right? start getting into 100. No, no, that's next. I haven't told you yet, but we're <laughs> going to do 100 pearls the next time. So, so we put together these top 25 pearls of pulmonary pathology, and it's a mixture of interstitial lung disease and neoplastic pathology. And so over the next 25 weeks, uh, we are going to be taking you on a journey of these top 25 pearls of pulmonary pathology. And Max, are these going to be like exhaustive didactic sessions like with a whole bunch of graphs and charts and tables? Actually, I figured we'd go straight to the literature and just review literature for <laughs> It's a journal cases. club. It's a journal club. No, it's no, not no. a journal club. Don't turn it off. No, these Don't are going to be quick. They're going to be to the point. They range in length from 8 to maybe 15 minutes, the longest one. And they're all going to be based around a case. They're all going to be based around um, a particular pearl and and we'll we'll get to that pearl we'll explain how to avoid uh falling into that trap uh and and we'll get you on your way so just eight to 15 minutes a week for 25 weeks and you will have gone through all 25 pearls of pulmonary pathology and you can always go back and you can always go back look at it again that's right so they could be 25 and 25 and 25 another 25 for those of us getting older you know you forget to go back you gotta go back you gotta go back and look again so there has to be some kind of organization. It just can't be like random 25 pearls. Do you have an idea? Of well, I mean, it would be nice. I, I mean, because cases come random, right? So yeah. it is kind of the nature of the beast. You never know what you're going to get. But we did kind of organize these top 25 pearls into six particular topics. Cool. Okay. And so the, the first topic that we decided to, to uh, uh, approach was how knowing the biopsy technique might change your pathologic approach. Because even, you know, you open up the book of pulmonary pathology and you just start reading, it, it doesn't, it just starts going into diseases. It doesn't tell you how your mindset and how you approach the biopsy should change depending on whether it's a transbronch or a needle core biopsy or a cryo biopsy or a surgical wedge biopsy. Right. So or a cytology. Or exactly, like an EBIS. Right. FNA. So it's not infinite number of biopsy samples, but... We, we think you should know how to manage each of these samples from a standpoint of what diagnostic considerations should be on the table when you get a sample like that. The difference between a bronchoscopic, visually directed biopsy of the airway versus a transbronchial biopsy, which is done blind, if you will, usually under fluoroscopy, but you're not looking as you biopsy with the transbronch. So you're kind of going out into the lung and hoping to get close to something Yep. It has an answer. Yep. So the first topic, there's going to be three pearls. 
how knowing the biopsy approach should change the way you approach the biopsy. Great. Topic number two, everyone's favorite, Kevin. What's topic number two? Unfortunately, malignancy, carcinoma, and adenocarcinoma, specifically because adenocarcinoma is the poster child today. It is the hot topic. It has been for the last eight or 10 years. Uh, I think it's only gonna get more uh, heated as we start getting newer and newer uh, targeted therapies, immunotherapies. Uh, the, the landscape for lung cancer is changing and we need to be part of that. And we're gonna help you navigate those, those new ideas uh, and new ways to approach the diagnosis of adenocarcinoma in 2020. Exactly, so we've got four pearls dealing with adenocarcinoma. Uh, the next is kind of sort of a, a key of interstitial lung disease, and that's how the, the, that regards the importance of clinical and radiographic correlation in pulmonary pathology. Right. Even the best pulmonary pathologists in the world, like Kevin, even the best pulmonary pathologist can only get so far if you're just given the slides and nothing else. So this talks about how the pathologist has to kind of break out of their shell of just looking at their microscope and saying what they see on the microscope and actually reach out to clinical colleagues, reach out to radiology colleagues to understand how that additional information is going to change the way you put your report together. And that is time consuming. I know a lot of you are out there saying, oh, listen, I've got a busy day. I've got a hundred cases to look at. And I've got this darn transbronchial biopsy. You tell me I've got to call the clinician. I've got to look at the CT scan. Uh, it's not going to happen. You know, I mean, it's not going to. So we understand that you're going to be looking at these biopsies. You're going to just pull them up on the scope and you're going to say, whoa, inflammation. Now, we're going to help you figure out what things are important in the transbronchial biopsy or in the surgical wedge biopsy. But there's no question that if you can get even a radiologist's description of the radiology of a CT scan, and you get a brief clinical history, age, gender, onset of symptoms, pace of disease or yep. tempo, tempo of disease, you will have you will be so far ahead in your interpretation. You can turn something that might be not very specific to something that suggests an actual diagnosis. And putting it all together, the clinician will be able to make the clinical pathologic diagnosis and treat the patient appropriately. So that's kind of a big one. We've got five pearls associated with that topic. Ah, oh, five. So topic four. Topic four, what to do with the blue biopsy. All right. In fact, cellular infiltrates is one of the patterns of pulmonary pathology. And so what to do with the blue biopsy, it brings up a particular differential diagnosis. And so we're gonna highlight three pearls on how to approach the blue biopsy. And this is ILD blue biopsy, not tumor blue biopsy, which you might think about small cells or something like that. Right. So blue meaning these are laden with hematoxyl. Inflammatory cell meaning infiltrates. Meaning lots of lots nuclei. Lots of nuclei. Lots of nuclei. Usually inflammatory cell yeah. infiltrates. Yeah. So what to do with the blue biopsy, how many Pearls, do you think they're in there? Uh, I think in the blue biopsy, there's just three pearls. Okay, great. Topic five is approach to important non-adenocarcinoma thoracic tumors. And we have to use the term thoracic here because we can't just restrict those to the lung because the pleura is really not part of the lung. They're next to each other, but they're, they're different organs. So in, to, in order to encompass tumors of pleura and lung, you have to say, Thoracic and there's mediastinum too, and there's, and there's mediastinum just some tissue and it's just it's yeah, messy. Yeah, it is. But so we're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about how to approach some of these uh, these different differential diagnoses that come up outside of just uh, adenocarcinoma, which we cover in a separate topic. And how many do you think? Three we'll pearls. There? Three pearls there. Approach non-adenocarcinoma thoracic neoplasm. So we're, we still have a long ways to go to get to twenty-five. So yeah. I'm thinking topic six topic must six. must be loaded. Yeah. So topic six, uh, and to be honest, I stole some of my top 10 pearls to go into topic six, nice. because topic six really is the key interstitial lung disease pearls that should change your practice. Right. You should watch these six, or these seven videos actually, these seven pearls, because it includes the bonus pearl. You should watch these, and each one you watch, you should say, okay, Next time I get a case like this, I'm going to think about this pearl and it's going to change the way I report this case or change the way I think about this case or change the way I talk to my clinician about this case. Maybe even bookmark. Maybe even bookmark. Those, because yeah. those, those seven are really, they're, they're, they're life fundamental. savers. They're yeah. fundamental. Yeah. Great. So, Kevin, what is the format of this uh, series going to be? 
we've seen lots of people do YouTube videos, and we think for pathology, you, you obviously want to see a microscopic image. So we decided on digital slides. Yep. And digital slides are fine with narration, but we thought it would be special to have a picture of the two of us puzzling over a digital slide. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. We'll be up front and sort of off center left, and in the background, there'll be an, a live aperio digital or aperio, aperio like digital image that we will use as part of our discussion of the case. Exactly. And so for each, each pearl is going to have its own video. Uh, we are going to be posting one new video and one new pearl uh, each week for the next 25 weeks. Uh, and as, as we go through this series, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have a comment, if you agree with what we're saying, if you disagree with what you're saying, um, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to hear if you're enjoying the videos or if there's some other topics or aspects that you think we haven't covered well enough. Uh, of course, like I said, there's going to be the top 100 uh, pearls after this, so we can include some, some additional pearls. Right. Uh, if you don't want to miss any of these uh, cases as they get uh, dropped and, and posted to YouTube, you can hit the red subscribe button, and then you'll get notified uh, when when one of these uh, comes out. New content. Yeah. Exactly. Great. So you can reach us through commenting on the YouTube channel. Uh, we are also on Instagram, at 6patterns, the number 6, at the number 6 patterns. Uh, you can also send us a tweet on Twitter, again, at Six Patterns. And then uh, we have a website, www.thenumber6patterns.org. Uh, so all those are the same uh, six patterns. And um, uh, we'll put links to those things uh, down below within the description of, of, of this video. Great. So uh, we're looking forward to this. I hope uh, you guys are looking forward to it. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.